This is Tawny, a 12 year old chess prodigy in New York City who has defeated every single chess player out there. He has defeated Hikaru. He has defeated Gotham Chess. He has defeated the Boda sisters. And this time it was my turn to face him. Now this is by far the strongest 12 year old that I've ever played in my life. And I was so nervous before the game started. I'll be talking you through every single move that I did. And here we have it. Here we have the game. So he started with the move e4 and this was played in an online event. C5, knight f3, e6. I was playing the Sicilian, my favorite opening against e4. And he went g3. And this is the French variation of the Sicilian. The idea is simply that he wants to develop the bishop to g2. He wants to fianchetto this bishop, have the bishop sniping down the whole diagonal. Because at some point, I will probably want to have a pawn here on d5. And then this bishop will be looking at my pawn and put pressure on it. So I went knight c6, bishop g2, d5. And now there were some exchanges and he went d4. It's really important that he goes d4 because if it gives me too much time, I might go d4 myself and get a lot of space. So d4 and here knight f6, castles and bishop e7. And now finally, after I developed my bishop, he decided to capture the pawn on c5. Now here, I don't want to capture it back or, you know, I could, I could capture it back, but there might be rookie one check. So I decided in this position to simply castle. And after bishop g5, I want bishop take c5. So now I capture the pawn. So now we can see in this position that basically um, it's, it's equal material, everything. It looks like I have quite a lot of center, but actually this pawn that I have on d5 is my biggest weakness. It's, it's sort of a strength that I have, that I have my pawn over here because it's allowing me to get all my pieces out very easily, but it's also a weakness because it's an isolated pawn, which means that it doesn't have any other pawn that is defending it. So I'm gonna have to be really careful with not losing this pawn. Now in this position, it may look as if Tani has the opportunity of winning this pawn by capturing my knight, having my queen uh, deviate from, from the defense of this pawn up here, but the issue is that then if he captures, I can capture this pawn on b2. This pawn is also, uh, could become a weakness. So, so he went here knight c3 and then I went bishop e6 to defend the pawn and develop a piece at the same time. Now here he went knight e2 and in this position actually I could have gone something like h6 or rook e8. But I decided that I wanted to go d4 because I wanted to get a lot of space. Um, I was seeing squares like this one becoming free. And I thought that this was a good move, but this is actually not the best move because after knight f4, we can see that this knight becomes really, really strong. And my bishop doesn't have that many places to go to. So here actually the best thing is for my bishop to retreat all the way back to c8. But I decided to go bishop f5 and attack his rook. Now here he can go rook e1, but he went knight d3 blocking my bishop and I ended up going bishop b6 as my bishop was under attack. Now typically I want to bring my bishop back to e7 so that my knight is not pinned, but I wanted to keep my pawn defended, so that's why I went here. But it would have been better to go here because this pin is actually quite annoying. So rook e1 was played, I went h6 just kicking away the bishop and he decided to capture, capture, and go knight d2. Now, this position is actually totally fine for me. My bishop is under attack. And here, actually, one good thing would be for me to retreat the bishop. But I didn't like the idea of him bringing up his knight. And I thought that if I took and took, that his pawn structure would become a little bit weird. Because this pawn would become pretty weak. As it would be an, also an isolated pawn, as there's no pawn defending it. So that's the reason I play this. Um, and here I went rook e8. Now here he played knight c4, threatening my bishop. But at this point, I mean, I was pretty happy with the, with the position. And I decided to go for the move bishop c5 with the idea of going bishop b4 and threatening this rook. Because if I'm able to do this and I'm able to force him to exchange uh, these rooks, then I might be able to take control of this file. And rooks, they want to be in open files where they're, well, where, where they're open because that's where rooks have the most movement. So if I'm able to have a rook here and he doesn't have any rook here, then that will mean the, that, that I'll be able to control this. Um, so he went here, queen b3, which is a really good move. And here I thought I saw a tactic. Like I was sitting here for like two minutes and these were five minute games. And I was sitting there 
And I really thought it was a tactic that was beautiful. And I was really happy with myself when I saw this tactic. Now, um, like you guys know, I wanted to go bishop b4 to attack this rook, to threaten it, because I wanted him to exchange. Um, but in this position, it looks as if bishop b4 doesn't work due to... Well, I'll show you, because I ended up going bishop b4. It looks like it doesn't work due to exchanging the rooks and then him taking away the defender of my bishop. Bishop takes knight. But here I saw this idea that I thought was beautiful of going bishop e1 intermediate move, threatening to go queen takes f2 and then queen f1 checkmate. And I thought this was absolutely beautiful. Now, when I entered this whole sequence, he looked so shocked. It was like, did I just win a piece? But I was really proud of myself for finding this idea. Now, in this position, actually, after bishop g2, this is a completely equal position. I equalized it. I equalized my position against, against you know, this incredibly strong uh, player. And queen takes f2 was played. Now, he has to go king h1. And in this position, I actually only have one move that keeps the position being equal. And that move is going back with the bishop to a5. Now, this move never occurred to me because... Going here, I'm literally giving away the bishop. I mean, Tani can literally just capture my bishop with the knight. But the idea is that if this, this would be a checkmate due to takes, takes, bishop f1 being the only move blocking the checkmate and then uh, queen takes f1. So bishop a5 never occurred to me. And after this position, the best move is to go bishop e4, blocking the rook from entering. And then I have this beautiful idea of going back with the bishop to e1, threatening the checkmate. And now he pretty much has to go back to g2. And this would become a repetition, which would mean that it would be a draw. So that was one way that I could try to draw my game against Tani. But instead, after king h1, I didn't see this idea of bishop a5, and I went rook e2, threatening to capture here. Now, in this position, I thought I was winning, but I missed that he has queen takes b7, winning a pawn, but also defending the bishop. I completely missed this. And here, after a few moves, like a5, queen a8 check, king h7, queen f3, he was able to force the exchange of queens, and now I am simply a piece down. Um, and I don't have any counterplay. You do need to have more pieces if you want to have counterplay uh, because I don't have enough pieces to attack, to attack with. So I really would need to attack his king to try to get some sort of counterplay. So here, bishop e4 check, g6, he captured my bishop, and then I decided to resign because I was going to be two pieces down. And, you know, again, someone as strong as him, um, it would be completely impossible for me to save it. So this is my game against Tani. We actually ended up doing a rematch and um, I may have lost that game as well. But Tani is an incredibly strong player and I was actually pretty upset after this game because I really felt like I'd found this beautiful tactic and, you know, I, I was really proud of my position. So I was really sad after this game actually because I really, really felt like I had a chance against him. But I missed this move, queen takes b7, which was, you know, which, which, was quite, which was quite sad. I really thought I might save a, a draw there. But yeah, I'm so excited to see his future. He's absolutely amazingly good. Like you guys can see, he's a FIDE master. He has 2300 FIDE rating, which is, you know, insane at this age. And I am 100% sure that he will become a grandmaster in the future. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching my game against him. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in my next video.